To most, this may seem like a child attending a basic piano lesson. But for Andrew Huang, who's autistic, this is an achievement that reflects his growing ability to grasp things through focus. I find it quite really interesting. It's quite different because it can change moods quite quickly, differently. He can be happy and next minute he'll be lying on the floor jumping, <laughs> jumping around doing his own little thing. So it's been, you've got to try and keep him interested, interacting and changing, doing different things all the time. But I've, I really enjoy, really enjoy teaching him. Autism, a developmental disorder that restricts social communication and expression, often creates a sense of frustration for both parent and child. But after a few years of playing music, Andrew has slowly begun to find a natural way to express himself. He comes in and he will learn a piece and next week he'll come back and he'll know it and he'll come back and even have learnt more. So he picks things up and very quickly, a lot of children, it's just as, just as quick as any other child. It's very important to be able to have them pick up the rhythm of the piece because that's how, how you get the piece. And he, I think, joined his musical therapy, did a lot of rhythm playing. I think that's really helped him. And this is where his journey began two years ago, where Andrew came not as a student, but as a client for music therapy. Oh, hello. Returning to visit his therapist today, Marie, the welcome is warm and familiar. Hi, Marie. Um, it was wonderful just to, to see him again and to see his face light up as soon as he saw me. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really powerful moment to, to have that connection again and to realize that really it's, it's never lost. He was quite a frustrated young man, actually, when he first came. He really struggled to make himself understood. Um, he found communication verbally really hard, um, and yet he expressed himself through his body, through his face, and through music incredibly fluently. Um, so that's why music therapy seemed really important for him, to allow him a space to express himself, release these frustrations, and then we could actually start to look at some of the other areas of need that he had. What Andrew needed was a way to learn social skills and communication beyond the limitations of normal language. In music therapy, for example, we're not actually teaching music, and the goals that we create with the family um, and with the client are non-musical goals, primarily. So, for example, for, with Andrew, um, his goals were essentially around learning to turn take, learning to wait and listen, respond appropriately to another person, um, and to engage appropriately with another person. Can we make an even bigger sound? Yeah. I'm gonna hold this end. Can Ooh. you make a does it go with this hand? The center runs entirely on charity and is founded on Rudolf Steiner's philosophy on the therapeutic powers of music for special needs children. Music is, is a language without the syntax and grammar that's required for verbal language. So there's, there's less structure. It's kind of universally understood because it's, at its root, it's gesture. So it is an expressive medium. It's a creative medium where basically anything goes. Um, so for somebody like Andrew, who really struggles with that verbal communication, there's you know, a music room full of instruments. There's a real playground. From refusing to learn the piano a few years ago to showing off his new skills to his therapist today, Andrew has come a long way in a short time. Music was always in him, but surfaced yeah. only after therapy. Can I choose another one? Uh, um, no. He refused not only to learn the piano, um, but to play the piano in therapy, and he didn't want me to play the piano. Um, and so to see him actually sitting down in front of a piano and playing a tune um, with his mother, you know, and actually working with her at home is, is quite a phenomenal step. I, 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 will, I will do it. OK. Wow! You're really good at playing piano. <laughs> Can I play with you? Um, no. OK. It empowers him. It empowers him with a skill that some of his peers may not have, for example. And so for a child who um, would probably at school often feel and, and experience his difficulties with communication, for example, and general interaction, interacting with peers, for, for him then to have this skill that is 
something that he can do that maybe other people can't and something that he can then share with people and is a socially accepted skill and something that other people can really um, admire him for, I imagine that's extremely empowering for him. Before Andrew started, he had severe autistic symptoms. He could only speak a few words, had no feeling of sharing or emotions. But since then, he's improved a lot in a way that he can form whole sentences and speak like a normal person. He has feeling of sharing and is able to express his emotions. You start. No way. Shall I start? Of course you can. Okay. <laughs> that surprised you, didn't it? Yeah. The music therapy center has used fun methods for Andrew to concentrate. The tutor plays a part and then tells Andrew to play. So he feels more involved, therefore making it easier for him to concentrate. This is a very important technique they use. Fingers! Fingers! I feel very good that he's playing the piano right now. The piano has shown he has great potential to flow with the music as if he was a part of it. In the future, I hope he becomes a normal person, or greater than that. I hope that he'll achieve his potential in his life. Perhaps he could even become a musician. To make a donation to the center, go to this website.